Hey everyone, I want the black here today. Um, today I thought that I would go through the process of how I make a rattan sword. I think that this is a, a thing that lots of new fighters maybe overlook or aren't taught as well as they could be. Um, the idea being, well, let's just get a weapon in your hand and we'll get you out there and we'll get you fighting. Uh, but maybe give us some thought to what works for you and, and to some of the techniques that you can use to, to build one of these rattan swords. So I'm gonna show you how to make uh, my rattan sword. Um, I'm not saying it's the only way to make a rattan sword and I'm not even saying it's the best way to make a rattan sword. Uh, I am saying it's the way that I make them, it's the way that I like them. So I'll go through the process of, from a raw stick of rattan to uh, a finished product. So I'll show you how to make, uh, how, to, how to play or how I, how I like to shape it, how I like to shape the handle, how I like to make the thrusting tips, how I like to tape them up, how I like to put the basket holds on, and uh, how I like to put the trigger on, uh, the thing that holds it to my hand. So yeah, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is, um, I like to plane down uh, rattan that's, I think, too thick. So this is a really thick piece of rattan. Um, it's too heavy to swing, and it's too fat to get a good grip on, and, and uh, so I like to plane it down so it's, uh, in my preference, um, I like a inch and a quarter planed and then, you know, reasonably thick, uh, reasonably long, because uh, I like a nice oval sword uh, shape to sort of start with. So uh, there's lots of different ways to plane a sword, uh, or a piece of rattan, as it were. Uh, the way that I like to use is uh, with a power planer. Some guys like to use a, a table saw. I never got the knack of that. Um, other guys like a draw knife. I never got the knack of that. Um, some guys like to... Uh, use a jigsaw and that never really made any sense to me so I a long time ago I bought a power planer just a hand one I'll show it to you in a second and uh, I think it's well worth the investment I've planed dozens and dozens of swords with it and I think it's probably the fastest way to go so I'm gonna go grab it and I'll be right back okay so here I've got my power planer nothing fancy here I think it was probably a Home Depot special Black & Decker uh, just has a like a rotating blade at the bottom here. I've got it set to its, uh, to take the biggest chunk it can, uh, just cause that seems to be the best for rattan. Rattan's a bit wavy. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's a kind of a dangerous thing. So you gotta keep your hands clear. You gotta wear eye protection's pretty loud. So I wear ear protection. And uh, yeah, it's plain one or two pieces of wood and dozens and dozens of sticks of rattan. So I'm gonna get this thing going here. Oh yeah, one more thing. I like, um, the easiest way that I found to do this is to stick it. You can stick it in your vise if you want, but you gotta be very careful uh, that you don't hit the vise with the planer. Um, I like this old workmate workbench thing. It's got a little kind of a vise thing here. It's got a, it's got grooves cut in here and here, so it's easy to grab a round piece of rattan or something right in sort of in the middle. And uh, yeah, it's, this thing has gotta be 30 years old. I've had it forever, um, but I just kind of stick it right in there so that it's got, uh, so I got some place to go, and then I just kind of start playing it. So I just do, you know, sort of nice even swipes at it until it looks like, I know, I've got, I'm sort of the two thirds of the way there. I'll show you in a second. Too small. I do. There we go. So I've got this set up to take off a sixteenth of an inch, and I did three swipes, so that's approximately three sixteenths. Then I flip it over, making sure that I do it, you know, so that the flat is on the bottom. And I do it to the other side. So 
I've taken a few swipes off both sides. You can kind of see that that's, that's getting there. I like to kind of gauge it out. I like to gauge it out here to see how we're doing. And I could probably take a swipe off of both sides. Just at the tip there. Yeah, I don't think I want to take any more off the sides. Although it's pretty thick at the bottom here. Should be fine though. We can take that down. Okay, so that's about as thin as I want. Now, I don't like these hard edges on the sides, so I actually plan this on uh, six parts, right? Top, bottom, and then each one of the corners, just so I can get a nice, closer to a nice oval shape as my sort of starting point to build that sword. Sides plane, and that's starting to feel a little more like a like a proper sword. If it's really thick, sometimes I take the skin off the back of it if I want to thin it down a bit. But this is okay. I think I might take another swipe off of the the corners just to just to skinny it down a bit. It's a little big for my taste. So what I'm trying to do here is leave the thickness at the thickest point alone and just take some weight off. This should be the last cut that we do. So that's an excellent place to start. So now that we've planed it up, let's see if I can take those off. So now that we've planed it up, uh, we can go over to the vise and stick it in there and start kind of sanding down some of these sharp corners. Um, you might be wondering what happens if you take too much off. And if you take too much off, well, that's just a bit of a hard lesson to learn because uh, if you take way too much off, you can't even really build this side up with tape. So it takes a bit of a touch to try to figure out exactly how much you want to take off versus how much you want to leave on. It's all a personal preference thing. Um, I've been at this for 30 years and so I got a pretty good idea of what I like uh, in a sword, but uh, uh, yeah, I guess maybe a few words on, on why I started with planing. Some guys like to cut off exactly all their swords are 35 inches, for example. Um, I'm more of a uh, cut the, like, you know, it's in a sword shape. I cut it off to be about 38 inches, maybe, and then uh, plane it down and see how it feels. Maybe it wants to be a a uh, long sword, maybe wants to be a shorter sword if it's a little heavy. You know, I think the rattan's kind of got a, I don't know, a bit of a, bit of, bit of a way that it wants to be. Uh, maybe that's getting too uh, metaphysical, but uh, sword, sword making is different for everybody. Frankly, everyone kind of makes it a little, a little bit different, and that's how I make mine. So, okay, I'm going to go sand this off. I'll meet you all over at the workbench. All right, welcome to my very messy workbench. Uh, excuse the mess, we're between maids here in the garage. Um, so yeah, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, sand this guy down a little bit now, make him nice and smooth and, uh, and comfortable for the hand. Um, and it just, I don't know, it seems to feel better if it's, if it's a smoother sword. So um, it's, got these, uh, it's got these sort of ridges from when I, uh, from when I planed it. So I'm going to take I don't know, a little bit of, I don't want to damage the rattan too, too much. So I shove it 
throw a piece of leather in here. Stick this in here. And so, I don't know, I suppose some folks would like to use a power sander of some kind for this sort of thing, but I like to use this, uh, I like to do it by hand for some reason. I don't know. It feels more like I'm, feels more like I'm working it, I guess, or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, so all I really do is just, this is some medium grit emery cloth. I just kind of, you know, create a ton of dust. But yeah, just put it back and forth. There'd be a cleaner way to do this for sure, but I'm not doing that. Yeah, and so I just kind of like to have it, uh, you know, not, not perfectly smooth all the way around, but just to take the hard edges off. So I'll do that. I'll probably speed up the video because no one wants to see this. It's a bit boring. One side that looks like it's really it was pretty good. Flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. Honestly, you could do this with uh, <clears throat> with some old, probably kind of good sandpaper, maybe, or something like that. Kind of anything that you can get your hands on. I happen to have a bunch of emery cloth lying around, so that looks so well. Something kind of nostalgic to me about the smell of rotanda. bit to go. And that's the same thing. And this side is definitely up. That's the way that's going to go. Okay, so um, I also like to round off uh, the tip of the sword. Not round it necessarily, but take those corners right off of there. And uh, for that, I just throw it on the bell sander for a little bit uh, just to ground those off. Um, 
Not sure why I belt sand that part, but hand sand that part, but that's what I do. Just to take the just to take the edge off of it, that's going to be the tip. Um, and so next is marking out where the handle is going to be and carving on the handle. All right. So um, now is around the time that I like to figure out where the handle is going to be, where it's going to sit. Um, and I just happen to have a basket hilt right here from PlasticSmithArmory.com. Uh, for all of your low-profile, high-quality, high-density polyethylene armor needs. Um, I've always got a few of these lying around in case anyone's ever looking for some. So, um, all I really do is just slide the basket hilt on to where the sword kind of, like where it goes to the bottom, to this bottom tang. I like them. I like a two-tang basket hilt. Some guys like to drill in through the bottom of their basket hilts. It's all personal preference. Anyway, so I kind of mark out where that is going to go, and then I grab onto it, try to figure out where my hand is going to be, see if I can show that to you there. Um, and so that's kind of where I, you know, it wants to kind of go. Um, and then all I really do is just slide the basket belt off without letting go. Without letting go. Oh. And so that's where it wants to go. And so then I just mark this with a marker. Mark so that the, the, let's see if I can get on the camera there. Different camera. That's not much better. Um, I mark where top of the hand's gonna be, where the thumb comes around. Front of the hand and then I mark the bottom as well right where my my fingers kind of go and then around the back I always get a little ink on my hands for whatever reason all right back of the hand just kind of where my mitts want to live so then I end up with something like that. And so this, I like to carve down uh, reasonably thin because then I like to build it back up with tennis racket tape, which I'll show you after I carve it down. So here, what I want most out of this is this ring. I want this ring to be nice, to be thinner than everything else. Cause that's just, I like to know where, where home is. And that's what helps me center what home is on my sword. So that's the first thing I got to carve down. So there's a few different ways that I can do this. Um, I've got a wood file here that helps me kind of jack it down. I've got a wood uh, rasp here that, that I tend to use. My wood rasp is getting kind of dull. So I'm gonna try something different just for you folks to see how this all turns out. I uh, recently rediscovered this wood rasp bit. So I'm gonna throw it into my, uh, my drill here. And that might be a better way. Might go a little faster. Let's see how it goes. It's been a while since I've used it. I've made more swords with this wood and grasp than I care to name, but let's see how this one goes. That just digs right in there, doesn't it? making a bit of a mess but I think it's something that we can salvage here. Good. 
Okay, well let's see how that feels. Oh yeah, that's that's about right. It's kind of a kind of messy here, but uh, we'll smooth all that out with uh, uh, with time here. Okay, well let's finish up. So I've got the basic shape. I don't know that's that's kind of where home is, and so I'm just going to get this a little flatter and this a little flatter, and then we'll see from there. So this is more just touch than anything else. I, uh, however I shape these handles, whether it's with the wood rasp or with the drill or whatever, all I really end up doing is just grab it onto it and seeing how it works, right? So right now my thumb wants a little more room, I think. So I'm gonna give it some more room. And this is the fiddly part about making swords. I, I was always kind of envious of those rapier guys because they basically get a sword and they have it for a long, long time. Whereas uh, us rattan fighters, we have to rebuild these things, oh, 10 times a year, it seems. All right. I want more off the back here entirely. All back off of there. Definitely getting there. So you might be wondering, you know, why, uh, how, what am I doing here? And it really is just, I, I kind of want to like the feel of the sword. It's a very much a touchy-feely kind of thing, so I'm just going to keep working it until I like it. One of the things that, that I like to do is I like to leave this part pretty thick and then thin down these parts. So I like to have these two fingers have uh, sort of more stick to grab onto than these two fingers. Um, that's because that's a personal preference of mine. So I'm going to take down this part. That's starting to feel a little more like home here. This is, I think this part here for me is too aggressive. So I'll have to sand that down, but we're getting a lot closer to what I like to have here. There's a little flat bit there that that my index finger really likes, so I'm going to keep that there. So I'm just going to keep working this until it feels right, and I'll keep yammering on, or you can fast forward until we get to the good stuff. I think I'm going to stop with this. I'm going to go back to the house. <laughs> The, the hasp is quite a bit thicker than that little bit that I was using. That's why it feels so off. That's, that's getting there. So for the fine tuning, the rasp is, seems to be what, what it wants to do. And then for the bulk stuff. Yeah. 
we're getting much, much closer. Just a little bit of work in the fingertips there, I think. So my sword's, whoa, that's weird. Okay, no, that's, that's gotta go. I made a weird bump there that my hand doesn't like at all. That's a little better. All right. Just about. There, this is more right hand biased for me. Most of my swords are right hand biased. I can use them in my left, it's not that big a deal. Uh, my left, uh, as my secondary hand, that I only occasionally fight single sword with, it seems, uh, doesn't seem to mind this right hand biased sword. So I think we're just about done. I'll get it maybe a little bit thinner, and then I'll smooth it out. Well, maybe not. Well, I think, well, I'm gonna smooth it out and see how it fits. And the smoothing it out, I like to do by hand. When I say smooth out, I don't mean perfectly smooth, not smooth like this. I just want, I just want, I don't know, I want it to be a little smoother underneath the, under the tape because that's again all personal preference funny thing about handles is that they are just about as unique as fingerprints it seems you give any kind of guy this sword handle and this is a pretty generic one it's not very aggressive in either way it's got its own little bit of bits of characteristics but it's the the lumps and bumps in it are pretty subtle. Not as, not as subtle as some, but some guys like a square handle and some guys like a really round handle and some guys like a really weirdly shaped handle. And it's funny how we all get our personal preferences out of this stuff. All right, so. I like to feel how the sword jumps when I squeeze my hand to see how exactly it's going to work. I need it to be able to slide across the palm a little bit so it can't have any grabs here and it's got a little bit there so I'm going to take some of that off. That's got to be close to done. Yep, that feels better. So now we smooth it out, and that will be the handle carved. All right. Yep, oh, that's, yep, that's... that's the one right there. That feels great. One of the things I forgot to mention before was uh, it's nice to have a bit of a baseline. So, you know, if you like your handles to be cut a certain way, they should be as consistent as you can make them. Some guys have a really excellent way of sort of making that consistent every time. Um, I kind of go by feel and see how that goes. But my baseline's always been sort of a sword that I've always liked. This is the sword that I won my first crown with. Um, it's the best sword I've ever built. It just feels like home. It's, uh, it's been retired, but I keep it around for nostalgia's sake. I hang it up on the wall, um, and I like the feel of how everything works here. So this is always what I'm trying to replicate is to back here. So it doesn't look like much, uh, but it was really good to me. Okay, so now that we've got our handle carved, I want to cover it up with tennis tape, uh, and I'll tell you why as soon as we sort that all up.
Bear with me while I look for my test. All right, so I'm back. I didn't have any uh, of the, the racket tape that I like to use to wrap my swords, so I had to go to Canadian Tire and buy some. And so this is what that is. So it is uh, just tennis racket tape, actually. I like the absorbent stuff because it, um, it gives me a little bit of sweat absorbency on my sword hand, and I really think there's no better no better thing to, to wrap your sword in. I really like it. Um, it's sweat absorbent, it gives it a little extra grip, it's cushiony, um, I think it's just perfect. So let's get to it. So like I said, you can get this stuff at Canadian Tire. Um, I think it's about six or seven bucks for three rolls. Um, this little thing here is actually uh, uh, the finishing tape, so we just put that aside open it up and I always wrap from the bottom up because uh, that puts the uh, that puts the, the, the joints where the tape wraps around the wraps that makes them face downwards so all of the pressure is always going to be sort of going down um, as you swing the sword your your hand wants to naturally kind of you know as the centrifugal force it wants to fly out of your hand so if the if the wraps were facing up it would curl the tape down so that's why we always start it from the bottom So I basically like, I give it a little bit of, there's probably enough to do the whole thing, but I like to kind of overwrap it. Um, I give it a bit of a, uh, a little space at the bottom here, just because um, I like to have a little extra in case I get a little bit excited when I wrap the thing and I wrap it too much. And this is where the brackets are gonna sit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I just kind of wrap it up. So this stuff has kind of like a, kind of like a suede, leathery feel to it. Um, and I just, I really like, I wrap my swords in it. I wrap my uh, shield handles in it, uh, especially my round shield or oval shield or whatever. Um, anything that's got a sort of a center grip. Um, I just really like it. I, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's just great. It was actually, the, the guy who I first saw use it was my squire, Herrick, and I mercilessly mocked him for it, thinking that, um, wow, what's the, what's the point? Um, you'd want, your, you'd want to, to feel your sword in your hand, and that's just, that was just crap. Um, he was right, this is way better. Um, I can fight without a glove, and I really like it. So you can see, I, I, even though I left a little bit too much, I'm sort of short here. I need to go to about here, so I'm going to do this again. I'm gonna go up a little bit and I'm gonna be a little more conservative on the wrap. You wanna give it enough, enough of a go around at first so that it grabs onto itself. You can kind of see where it, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it leaves a little bit of a, a mark where your, where your last wrap went, so you can kind of use that as a guide. And this is all, like everything else with sword building, just kind of a personal preference thing. I'm sure there's fighters out there that would never dream of wrapping their handle. Uh, some fighters really like to use gloves and I just I, I didn't mind I lived, used gloves for a long time and then I got tired of of them dying and me having to find new ones sort of you know or forgetting that I had you know destroyed my glove at the last event and therefore needed the new one and all that kind of stuff so this this feels right so we got a little bit at the end here it's got a little bit of a adhesive thing at the end that you tear off I don't really, some of you who know how to write, wrap tennis rackets would probably know all this stuff, but I'd learn this stuff sort of firsthand. All right, so that's that. Um, I like to finish this off with a little bit of, uh, well, I used to use, I used to use electrical tape, but uh, uh, as it turns out, uh, it's got its own thing. And so we'll, we'll use what, it, what came with it, I think.
got a little adhesive back. And it's kind of stretchy. And now I have a Wilson branded sword, which is fine because this white stuff will just be hidden by the basket hilt. All right. So that is that. And that feels really good to me. Um, it, uh, it's got, you can see it's got a bit of a bias where my, these fingers go. So it, I can, I know where home is immediately. And then it's got a little more, uh, a little more meat down here so that when I'm grabbing with these bottom two fingers, it's one to snap forward. Yeah. And that's, that's my sword handle. So next let's put the basket hilt on. Here we have one of the basket hilts that I built from PlasticSmithArmory.com. Um, this is actually a slightly different design than I've made in the past. I'm experimenting with some new shapes, and so this will be sort of a trial run for that. Um, I guess before we go into the basket hilt stuff, um, we should figure out a trigger of some kind. So let's do that. So the triggers that I like to use, some folks like to use like a... Uh, like a regular finger trigger. Let me see if I can just dig out some So the stuff that I like to use is just nylon webbing um, You can see that it's there's nothing special to it. Uh, so some guys like to use a finger trigger so When I used to use finger triggers I would use these two fingers and I would just tape this up to the side of the sword and use that and I don't do that anymore. I have a different style of trigger that um, some of you might know him. A fellow by the name of Gan uh, sort of either figured out or saw somewhere. Or I'm not sure where exactly he, he figured this out, but um, he's another guy that I mercilessly mocked for this weird trigger, and then I started to use it, and I really like it. So I call it a wrist trigger, uh, and it just goes like this. So I put one wrap just straight down the side of the whole sword. Another one down here. Maybe that's a little short. That's basically it. Then I give it a little bit of a, needs a little bit of play. And I just know how long this is from playing with my style of half gauntlet and everything else. But that's the whole thing. So a bit more of a, like a lanyard, except when I tape it, I put a sort of a half twist in it, up through the middle, and then down like this. And then it, no, that's, that's no good at all. This has got to go way higher. So basically I can I can grab it where where home feels. Yeah. Start all that again. This could be that I've gone a little bit high on my stick this time around. With uh, with where I put my handle, but we'll see. So that feels about right. So I'm gonna temporarily tape this on the side, just like this. Yeah, it seems that that might be just a little bit long. I might have to cut the bottom of that off. We'll see how that goes. I thought I had measured it accurately against uh, the basket hilt, but this is a bit of a different style of basket hilt, so that could be what's going on here. You know, a more prepared guy would have all of this stuff sort of figured out and laid out before he went and tried to record a video, but nah, we're not going to do that. So for securing basket hilts and triggers and that kind of stuff, I just use hockey tape. Um, it seems to be the best, uh, gives me the best sort of combination of strength and ease to tear and stability and all that kind of stuff. Some guys use fiber tape. Uh, some folks use just duct tape. Again, all personal preference. All right. So that feels about right. Okay. 
So the wrist trigger up and around so that I can't actually let go of the sword even if I wanted to. And what that gives me is a little extra spin on um, how the sword works. Um, it allows me to, to really guide where the sword blade is with these fingers. So as the, as the wrap comes around, um, I can reef on it, let go of it a little bit. Uh, fingers on the sword still and guiding where the blade's gonna be. But um, it just uh, gives me a little extra, a little extra. And who doesn't want a little extra? So I'm just gonna dry fit my basket hilt on here, make sure everything seems good. That seems awful high to me, but we'll see. That's all good. That's where you want it. All right. Well, that's the trigger placed. I'm going to go and grab my half gauntlet to make sure that it's going to fit in there properly. I'll be right back. All right. Here's my ratty old half gauntlet here. Uh, the way my whole system works is half gauntlet goes on. It's got just a little string around the palm, but hand doesn't go into the palm. So half gauntlet sits there, then this goes on, then the half gauntlet gets tied in. So that way, it's impossible for me to let go of the sword and everything fits in there nice and snug. So I think that's probably just exactly where I want it to be. Everything seems to work. Half gauntlet doesn't bind. All right. So I think it's time to put this, put this guy on here. So like I said, top bracket, bottom bracket, and all I do is tape the thing on. Way back when I used to use hose clamps and I got, hose clamps, they break. They loosen over time, all that kind of stuff. I just, I've never, I haven't used hose clamps in years to put my sword on, I don't see the point. So to tape and make sure that they stay on there, take a length, you know, whatever it is. Three and a half feet ish there. Spin it around. All you hockey players know this from doing your sticks, but this is a thing I learned in the SCA because I never played hockey when I was a kid. So I wind it around and do a piece of rope. And then I got a little sticky tab at the very end here. And yeah, just wrap it around. I want to make sure that the placement is okay. And just wrap it around. Grab it onto it pretty tight. It's got some sticky to it, so that's helpful. Some folks worry a little bit about these edges on the on the tangs here. Um, I, I've never seen them cut through this stuff. Or if they have, it's been so slow a progression that the stick has been powdered out before it ever shows up. Um, so we've got sort of one length. I like to go one down one and up a little bit. I probably won't have enough here. I might. We'll see.
And then if you have enough tape, I just finish it off with a few wraps to cover up the, the mess. And there's the top of the basket hilt, sort of out. It's good. I'm pretty much out of tape here, so I'm going to get another roll. So, I don't know if you ever noticed, but on my basket hilts, the ones that I sell, um, I. I bend the bottom of the tang, uh, the bottom tang up a little bit, and that just helps keep the tape where it's supposed to be. Sometimes, uh, especially on, I used to bend the bracket over in a sort of a 90 degree angle, and I found the tape slipped off if, uh, if that bend was too short. So I just started making a, just a little bit of a, just a little flare out to make sure that doesn't happen. And there's the bottom. Basket hilt is on, solid, works well. Sword feels, sword feels really good. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, so now uh, what's left is the thrusting tip and tape up the sword and then we're done. So. The way that I make my thrusting tips is uh, kind of a hybrid of a lot of different folks. Um, I've experimented a lot with uh, with what works and what doesn't. For years and years, I used to use uh, just this same nylon webbing. Um, I would just sort of cross it over top of the of the sword, and I'd glue it on, and then stack a bunch of foam on top of it, and that was okay. But that seems to want to blow the corners of the tape out, and so it always looks like my thrusting tips coming off, and so that wasn't working for me. Um, I was trying a way that Rogan showed me uh, with uh, a special kind of wrap that he uses and uh, and that works really well, but it takes a lot of time. So I didn't like that. And so finally, uh, uh, Gunther told me uh, about seatbelts. So you can get seatbelt material for free uh, from Auto Wreckers. You can just go in there and cut them out of there. No one wants that stuff. Uh, it's super duper strong. And so all I really do is, uh, if you look here, um, all I really do is, you know, say maybe about half and half, maybe a third and two thirds, somewhere around there, enough for the, for some tape to grab onto this, to this cover here and a wrap around it and then stack it up with foam. And then that's that. And that seems to last long enough for the, the sword to sort of powder out and die, but not so long that it will outlive the sword because it doesn't need to outlive the sword. So yeah, um, the way I like to do this is I like to cut a bit of a, a bit of a notch in the top so that this seatbelt material stays flush with the sword because I don't like swords that look like Q-tips. So I like that sort of low profile thrusting tip look. So I'll just kind of mark. All right, folks, full disclosure here. I've uh, actually completed the sword that I was building before. Uh, but when editing the video, I found that uh, it was all scrambled and there was something that went wrong and the camera angle was weird and uh, one time it didn't actually record. So there's a bunch of messed up things that happened. So I'm just going to start uh, kind of where we left off, which is building the thrusting tip. So uh, what I did was I took our seatbelt material right here and I measured uh, to about half and then I marked a line all the way around the top. So... Uh, as I said, or maybe I didn't, um, I like the sword, I like the thrusting tip to be very, very flush 
with the, uh, the diameter of the sword. Um, this isn't a requirement, it's just a personal preference thing. So that's what I do. So now that I've got my line cut, I'm gonna cut all the way around the, uh, the sword and I'm gonna chisel it out. So maybe you can see, I'm just using a coping saw here, the blades, I don't know, maybe a few millimeters wide. Um, and I'm gonna basically cut to a blade depth. Um, it's kind of difficult to see, but not obviously all the way through the sword, just enough so that I can take a fair amount out with the chisel. So that's that. And so as you can see, you know, it's got about just the blade depth, just as far down as, as that blade is kind of flush with the top. And that'll give me just about enough I need to chisel out with my chisel. So because I've got a nice sharp edge here, it's easy to, to Take out little bits and pieces of the tip of this rattan. All right, that's pretty much it roughed out. It's reasonably uniform around there, I think. It sort of tapers out. So the way that this tends to work is I dig a little bit down and then come out, but then there's a little more that takes. So it, uh, it leaves a bit of a, I don't know, sort of a ridge around here. So sometimes I like to go Put it back the other way, just to make sure that it's kind of uniform. All right, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's just a little bit more narrow in here than it is here. And I'm fine with that because I'm gonna put a thrusting tip on here, I'm gonna tape on the top, and I'm gonna put tape around here and then the seat belt. So it's gonna have a little more material around here than it does here, and, I'm, and in the end, hopefully we'll get a nice uniform sort of thrusting tip shape. All right, so here we've got, um, I just cut these, these little foam discs out of, uh, I'm not even sure what kind of foam. It's a closed cell foam of some kind. It's very spongy. Um, I recommend that you get the rubberiest uh, foam that you can find because rubber doesn't break down nearly as fast as that blue plastic foam does. Blue plastic foam will compress over time and, and your thrusting tip will just not compress anymore and that's no good. That, that'll fail inspection. So I cut these out of a sheet of, oh, it's about half inch, a little less maybe, uh, of this closed cell foam. I cut them out with a hole saw actually because it's, it's actually pretty easy. Um, this is what I'm talking about when I say hole saw, and this isn't the same thing that I used to cut them out, but this is the idea. This thing just, so it doesn't, I thought maybe that it would tear the, the foam to bits, and it's a little bit ragged around the edges, but I'm sort of fine with that. So, yeah, I'm just gonna take three of these 
Guys, stack it up. That's, I don't even know how much that is. Plenty, plenty of compression there for a thrusting tip. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little pocket um, over top, and then I'm going to tape it around here, and then I'm going to put the seatbelt around it and tape it all up. So let's see how that works. So in the past, I've taken these and I've actually glued them together with contact cement, and um, I don't really think that's necessary anymore now that I've sort of come to realize it. All I really do is, without making, without making sure that the making sure that the foam isn't compressed, I just loosely tape them together because all this really has to do is hold its shape until I tape it to the sword. So I just go around a few times, kind of twisting as I go so that it's all enclosed in a pocket. This step isn't hypercritical. All we're looking for is a, uh, I just don't want these things to be falling off as I'm putting them on here. So that's our pocket of foam. Now I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use fiber tape in order to create a, a little bit of a, I don't know, sort of a latching mechanism onto here. And all that, all I'm doing here in this next step is making sure that the thrusting tip doesn't come flying out the end. Because again, how this is gonna work is, This is gonna be here. This is gonna wrap around. And so all we're creating in this next step is something to make sure this thrusting tube doesn't come flying out the end. This, this seat belt is gonna keep it from folding over. It's gonna keep it from cutting. Uh, hopefully this is gonna be a little bit compressed. So only a little bit of the tip is gonna be showing of the thrusting tip. So I'll have a spongy tip and then uh, uh, a nice solid base for hacking. So that's the, that's the plan, that's the idea. Let's see how it goes. So there's no real magic to this part. It really is just, uh, you know, if, if you're enterprising, you can glue this to the end of your sword to keep it there. Um, I don't think it's particularly necessary. All I'm doing is making sure that this thing stays on. So I'll do this a bunch of times, sort of overlapping the tape, and you'll see where we go from there. So there's like one, two, three, I think four. We'll do all of that again, just to make sure we've got enough binding power at the tip of this sword. All right, so there's our sort of pocket. Um, all I want to do now is wrap strapping tape around here so that it will act as a way to hold everything together on here. And again, just keep this thing from flying out the top. A couple of wraps is all it takes. All right, so that's pretty solid. That's what we want. Now it's time to take a little bit of seatbelt material and dry fit it all together. So I like to have the one side overlap a little bit. So that just means, oh, right about, right about there. Take that, cut it off at length. And then just to make sure things don't unravel,
Just burn the edges a little bit. All right, so the tape doesn't really love to stick to this, to this seat belt material, but you can kind of convince it if you do a long enough run. So that's where I start. That's where it's going to go. I like to have a, a run sort of all the way around. So that when it gets wrapped, it can wrap nice and tight around the whole thing. And suction on the, the little, suction on a little bit with the tape. All right. Make sure everything is snug. And I just pull it nice and taut. Now that that's there, I just kind of wrap down, wrap up a little bit, make sure all this stuff gets all tied in here. And then any little ridges and bumps here will basically get buried under this, this wrap of tape I'm about to do. You probably can't do this with too much force. Once you get, so my rattan ends right about here. Once you get past here, I'm not being so hard because I don't want to compress this. I don't want to squeeze this foam. I want this foam to be nice and nice and uh, pliable. So we've got a bit of a tip here hanging out that's going to grab on the bars and things down here. It's still very, still very soft, but uh, very cut resistant uh, thanks to the seatbelt material. And uh, yeah, all we got to do now is finish it off with a little bit of hockey tape. I like to use hockey tape because it's frictiony and it's grabby and uh, that's the kind of things that we need for a thrusting tip. That's all of our downwards wraps and then I just kind of And that's how I make my thrusting tips. All right, we're at the home stretch now. So um, I like to do a little bit of fiber tape near the top where all the damage happens. I don't fiber tape the whole thing anymore. Um, I used to not fiber tape it at all, but I don't know. I kind of go back and forth to whether I think this actually does anything or not. Maybe it's just habit. Um, some people think it holds the rattan together better. I think it tends to be more useful uh, sort of after you've got the first few millimeters of broomstick at the front there. But this sword feels just a little bit on the light side. I think the rattan isn't very, very dense. So this will give it a little more protection, give it a little more weight at the tip. And I think that's about all we need. Feels pretty good. All right. Now just a bit of duct tape. Cover the whole thing. And I think 
you know, uh, if you if you're still watching, congratulations, because this has been a while. Um, there's not much to duct tape in a sword. I like to make it smooth, uh, so I like to put it in the vise. So that I can kind of do it nice and quick. I don't put a whole lot of tape on swords. Um, if I'm going to retape a sword, I don't like to have a big giant mess to have to deal with. Of layer after layer after layer of tape. If anyone is wondering what I think the easiest way to retape a sword is, uh, just real quick, I take a like an Ulfa knife and I just run it like kind of over top of a garbage can and just flat enough, like I use these black blades that are super duper sharp, just flat enough so I'm not taking any rattan off, I'm just taking tape off, and it goes really quick. Um, I don't bother trying to pick it off. After the sword gets beat up, it's uh, it just takes too long. So that's what I think the easiest way to retape swords are, but I don't I don't retape too many swords. Retaping is a thing that we always used to do. We take all the tape off, and then of course it'd be a little bit broomy, a little powdery, and so we'd hard tape that hard tape the uh, the fibers back onto the stick with fiber tape, and then retape it all because back in the day, rattan was a little more scarce around here. These days, it seems that it's not that hard to find. Maybe it's because we travel more. Maybe we have more more enterprising people bringing uh, rattan in, which is very uh, Super handy and folks like me very much appreciate that. So keep it up, enterprising people. Oh, I hate it when it wrinkles. There's nothing worse than a wrinkly sword. <laughs> Quotable quotes from of our stick making class. All right. I don't think I have any red tape lying around. It's not an exact view right now anyway. So normally I would use some kind of red tape to mark the edge so that it's red on the edge and a different color up top. Uh, folks like that. Uh, it's a little unclear to me whether uh, a thrusting tip has to be a contrasting color to the edge marking tape. It, last I read the rules it said contrasting color but uh, in any case we're going to use black and black and I'm just going to let folks know that I have a thrusting tip. I like to use Gorilla Tape for the edge marking tape. Uh, if I can, because it seems to be a little thicker and deals with a little more punishment. A little extra added layer of protection, if you will. All right, that is very close to done. It's a little bit ratty at the bottom, and it's a little bit ratty at the top, and so I like to just finish it off with some athletic tape, and then that'll be it.
And that, as they say, is that. Let's see how it works. All right, so here we have our finished product. One rattan sword, one new sort of style basket hilt. A little bit of a different shape than what I normally sell. Just testing it out. Two tangs, thrusting tip at the end. Nice and soft and squishy to grab onto face grills and nipple rings and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, it seems to work good. I, uh, I like the feel of it. It seems to want to flip a little bit, which is good. I like swords to flip. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what else to tell you. That's how I make my swords. So thanks for watching. Thanks for paying attention. Uh, I hope that you found something useful in it and feel free to let me know however you can um, if you've got tips for me and how you make your swords because I'm super interested in all this nerdy sword fighter stuff. Uh, it's what keeps me going. So thanks for watching folks. Take care.